Okay, so if we look at the questions of mathematics, uh, there is a question about computing the determinant of a three by three matrix here. So if I take a simple three by three matrix, if you want to compute the determinant, you have some formula that always works. You choose one row or one column, for instance, this one. You start with the first value, one, and then you will multiply it by the small submatrix, which is two by two, that you get if you remove the column and row of the one. So this one, five, six, eight, nine. And then you repeat the process with the other values along the row or column that you choose. So two times the determinant of the small matrix that you get if you remove the column and row of the number two, which is four, six, seven, nine. And then the last one will be three times the determinant of the small matrix, four, five, seven, eight. Then you have alternate signs. You'll start with a plus here, a minus there, a plus here, and you'll get the total, which will be the determinant. So you see that you need three determinants of two by two matrices and it's much more simple if you have a two by two matrix, the determinant is just the product of the diagonal elements AD minus the product of the off diagonal elements BC. So this always works. And of course, you can find a lot of softwares that will do it for you. So typically with uh, Wolfram, if you just put a matrix here, it will, so you can check that the matrix is correct over there, and then it will give you a lot of information and typically it will give you the determinant here so that you can check the calculations. For instance, in this question, you need to uh, compute a second order partial derivative of a function. So if you have a function of two variables, for instance, this one, you may need to compute the partial derivatives, which mean the derivative of f with respect to x, r, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So in this case, for instance, this one, the notation actually assumes that y is no more a variable. The function is just a function of x, and y is a kind of constant. So if I just rewrite the function, y is a constant, so my function is sine to x plus some constant c times x. And then what you need is just the standard derivative of this function. So this is for the first order partial derivative. If you want a second order partial derivative, it's just the derivative of the derivative. 
So this one, for instance, is just the derivative, for instance, with respect to x, of the derivative, the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So you first need to compute the partial derivative with respect to y. You'll get a new function of x and y. If I come back here, once you computed the derivative of f with respect to x, you should remember that this constant is actually a function of y, so that the result will depend on y again. And once you have your new function of xy, again, you need to compute a new partial derivative with respect to x. Again, you can use a software to do it. If you put a function like this, so x squared exponential to y, if you ask for the partial derivatives, you'll get the two derivatives, one with respect to x and one with respect to y. If you're on the second order derivative with respect to x and y, you should either compute the derivative with respect to y of this one, df dx, or the partial derivative on x of this one, which is df dx, df dy, sorry. So the other doesn't matter. So either you compute the derivative on x of df dy or the derivative on y of df dx. And you may find softwares that compute also the second order partial derivatives. So in this question, you are asked about the inverse of a matrix, A minus one. So it's a small two by two matrix. So if you have a small two by two matrix like this, the inverse is also a two by two matrix, if the inverse exists, of course. In this case, it will exist. And so it's also a two by two matrix. So you have four values to find. And it's such that if you multiply A minus one by A, or A by a minus one, you get what we call the identity matrix, which is one, zero, zero, one. So these four values that we look for can be written as a solution actually of a linear system. If you expand the fact that the product of your original matrix by the inverse that you don't know should be this one, you will get four equations when you identify the two matrices here. Of course, you, so you need to solve actually a four by four linear system. And of course you can ask also the software. So in this example for the three by three matrix, along all the things you get, you also get the inverse here of the original matrix or you can use the software to check that the matrix you have, if you multiply it by the original matrix, you get the identity matrix. So the definition of an eigenvector is the following. So an eigenvector will be a vector such that if you multiply the matrix A by the vector xy, you will get a multiple of xy, where lambda is a scalar. So in this example, we assume that the, the, the multiple is lambda equal to three. Like this. So again, 
you just have to solve a small linear system, which is two by two, the unknowns are X and Y, the two components of the uh, eigenvector. And you get a small two by two linear system to solve to find X and Y such that this matrix times X, Y is equal to three times X, Y. And then you need to normalize it which means that the norm of the of the vector should be one so the idea is just to divide the vector by its norm so you have a new vector which is in the same direction but of norm one so again there are lots of softwares that give you this information so again still with the matrix here you can see that you get the eigenvalues, the lambdas, and the eigenvectors. So of course here they are not normalized. You should divide them by the norm to get the normalized eigenvectors. So you can do also everything in R, in MATLAB, in Python, in whatever you want.